Hi everyone! Welcome back to another video in our machine learning series. In this video, we'll learn yet another popular model ensembling method called gradient boosted trees. If you haven't already, check out our previous videos to learn about random forests, where we introduce the concept of model ensembling, as well as decision trees, where we talk about the building blocks of these models. In this video, we'll use gradient boosted trees to perform classification. Specifically, to identify the number drawn in an image. We'll use MNIST, a large database of handwritten images commonly used in image processing. It contains 60,000 training images and 10,000 testing images. Each pixel is a feature, and there are 10 possible classes. Let's first learn a bit more about the model. Gradient boosted trees and random forests are both ensembling methods that perform regression or classification by combining the outputs from individual trees. However, gradient boosted trees and random forests differ in the way the individual trees are built and in the way the results are combined. As you already know, random forests build independent decision trees and combine them in parallel. On the other hand, gradient boosted trees use a method called boosting. Boosting combines weak learners sequentially so that each new tree corrects the errors of the previous one. Weak learners are usually decision trees with only one split, called decision stumps. So the first step is to fit a single decision tree. We'll evaluate how well this tree does using a loss function. There are many different loss functions we can choose from. For multi-class classification, cross-entropy is a popular choice. Here's the equation for cross-entropy, where P is the label and Q is the prediction. Basically, the loss is high when the label and prediction do not agree, and the loss is zero when they're in perfect agreement. Now that we have our first tree and the loss function we'll use to evaluate the model, let's add in a second tree. We want the second tree to be such that when added to the first, it lowers the loss compared to the first tree alone. Here's what that looks like where eta is the learning rate. We want to find the direction in which the loss decreases the fastest. Mathematically, this is given by the negative derivative of loss with respect to the previous model's output. Therefore, we fit the second weak learner on the derivative of L with respect to f of 1, which is nothing but the gradient of the loss function with respect to the output of the previous model. That's why this method is called gradient boosting. For any step M, gradient boosted trees produces a model such that ensemble at step M equals ensemble at step M minus one plus the learning rate times the weak learner at step M. We want to choose the learning rate such that we don't walk too far in any direction. But at the same time, if the learning rate is too low, then the model might take too long to converge to the right answer. Compared to random forests, gradient boosted trees have a lot of model capacity, so they can model very complex relationships and decision boundaries. However, as with all models with high capacity, this can lead to overfitting very quickly. So be careful. We fit a gradient boosted trees model using the XG Boost library on MNIST with 330 weak learners and achieved 89% accuracy. Try it out for yourself using the link in the description and let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe to Econocent for videos on machine learning and more. 